Good morning, Colonial. It's so good to be with you. Um, I'm Alex Gulick. I am the Director of Student Ministries at South Kansas City, and I will um, be leading our devotional this morning. Um, so thank you for tuning in, and um, yeah, let's get started. I'm going to start us off um, with prayer, and um, then I'll welcome you all as I see you joining on. Um, so yeah, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Um, Lord, I thank you for the rain and for um, just your provision, God, and your sovereignty and um, just this season of Lent as we continue to reflect um, on your journey, Jesus, to the cross. And um, may we not take that for granted, but really see this season as a time of cleansing, a time of pruning, and a time of turning to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So, um, good morning, Rosie. It's so good to see you as well. Um, so today we are continuing in this series, 50 Reasons Why Jesus Came to Die. And day, today is day um, or reason 27. Um, so Jesus came to die to become a sympathetic and helpful priest. Um, so obviously um, Jesus came to die for 50 reasons, but this reason in particular um, resonates with me and really hits home um, with me because sometimes in life it can feel like no one understands what um, you're going through and no one can relate and no matter how much you can express or try to put words to what you're going through, the person listening just doesn't have that capacity to um, lean in and um, really know what's going on in your heart and in your mind um, because they're not you. But the cool thing is, is that God um, wired us and he made us so intentionally, so intimately that he knows exactly what we're going through. And not only that, but he entered into what um, we're going through um, and that's out of John 1, 14, where the word became flesh. So Jesus took on flesh and dwelt among us. So he didn't uh, stand off and far apart um, at a distance from community, but he entered in. Um, he took on flesh. He moved into the neighborhood. And I don't know about you, but that's super encouraging in terms of um, having a familiarity and um, our God is one who is intimately um, acquainted with everything that we walk through from rejection to suffering to um, loneliness to isolation um, to abandonment even. Jesus gets all of that because he walked it. He lived it. So um, let's be encouraged today by that. One of my favorite things um in following Jesus is um, worshiping him. And one of my favorite worship songs is by a woman um, named Stephanie Gretzinger. And her song that she released, I was in college when I found it. It's called Come Out of Hiding. And it talks about how um, God yearns for us to come to him, that we don't have to put on any airs or any type of uh, mask in coming to him, but we can come as we are because that's how he longs to meet us and to treat us and to care for us. Um, and so I'm going to read you guys some of the lyrics to this and I pray that you hear it as if Jesus is speaking it over you. Come out of hiding. You're safe here with me. There's no need to cover what I already see because I loved you before you knew it was love. And I saw it all, still I chose the cross. And you were the one that I was thinking of when I rose from the grave. Now rid of the shackles, my victory is yours. I tore the veil for you to come close. There's no reason to stand at a distance anymore. You're not far from home. 
No need to be frightened by intimacy. No, just throw off your fear and come running to me. Gosh, I love that song so much because in those lyrics and um, I just sense Jesus's heart where he understands our suffering. He understands when we're tempted and he he says, come child, he has clothed, he has clothed us in his righteousness and his robe of righteousness. That's imparted to us when we come to believe and put our faith and trust in him as our savior. And thus he is for us and not against us. He, he draws us close to the father so that when the father looks upon us, he sees us as a co-heir of his son. So we are fully accepted in the Lord's sight which means we can come to him. We can come to him with whatever is going on, just like coming to a father when you have an injury or a parent when you have an injury or um, you're having a rough day and you just need to talk to somebody about it. But unlike a parent, uh, God is the ultimate father um, who can greet you and meet you and heal you and whatever is revealed. Um, If you're honest, he wants us to be honest. Um, So, What's cool about um, Jesus and what's wonderful about Jesus, far more than just to be in awe or just um, to follow him, but to see him in truth as both sympathetic to our weakness and also a helpful priest. Um, In Hebrews 4, 15 through 16, um, we hear, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, But one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So Jesus paved the way, walked through everything that we would be able to relate to from being in a desert season to crying out to God in tears and his friends falling asleep, to being betrayed by one of his closest friends. I'm sure some of you have experienced that. I know I have experienced betrayal. I've experienced loneliness. Um, I've experienced bullying. Um, I've experienced um, name calling. And man, if I didn't know that Jesus had gone through those exact same things, I would have felt so isolated. But I remember one day I was praying to the Lord and I was going through a difficult time of anxiety. And um, although Jesus never um, was outright anxious before the Lord, I knew that Jesus understood my anxiety because God made me. And so I was praying and just asking the Lord for relief and feeling very alone in my struggle, um, that none of my friends could truly understand um, what was going on in my mind, how to stop those circular thoughts. And I felt somewhat alone in my battle um, against even Satan, who was trying to feed um, me with shame and lies and, um, yeah, just a spiral of remorse. And in that moment, I remember having this vision I was out on the water in a boat and I look up and instead of me holding the oars, I see Jesus um, with ease paddling through the water and his face so gentle, so calming and just asking me to show up with him, telling me, hey, Alex, I get it. I get it. I know what you're going through, sister. Um, And I'm here for you. I love you. I yearn for you to be at peace in me. And I felt this overwhelming sense of calm, almost like when he rebuked the wind and the waves from the boat. That's exactly how I felt in the midst of my anxiety because I saw his eyes. Um, You know, we're exhorted to keep our eyes fixed on the author and perfecter of our faith, which is Jesus. And in that moment, I sensed his gaze upon me and his delight. And in the midst of my pain, in the midst of my suffering, in the midst of my temptation to give in to um, 
hopelessness or um, to, to believe the lies of the enemy, right there, Jesus met me and said, child, hey, focus on me. Keep your eyes fixed on me. I'm here for you. Um, so an interesting thing that John Piper mentions in this book that he wrote is that if a person um, gives into temptation, it never reaches its fullest and longest assault. So, um, and what's different about what we humans go through and what Jesus went through is that Jesus never caved. And so he endured the full pressure to the end, um, the maximum amount of temptation to its fullest force. Um, and I had never really thought about that. Um, he was actually under the fullest and longest assault of temptation that anyone has ever experienced. So when we feel like we're at the end of our rope, we can be encouraged. Wow, Jesus and his long suffering endurance went much farther. Um, and therefore we can have the endurance that he imparts to us to combat temptation. Um, because he, number one, was perfect and never deserved um, the type of abuse and suffering that he faced. And um, he never had a, a greater temptation um, than, man, seeing Satan face to face in the desert and going 40 days and 40 nights without food and, um, and then preaching the word to himself and also to combat Satan. Um, so again, in Hebrews 4.15, he's able to sympathize with our weaknesses. Um, the Bible says that um, making a connection between Jesus' sympathy, um, there's a connection there between that and our confidence in prayer. It says that since he is able to sympathize with our weaknesses, Therefore, we should with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For some of us, myself included, we go through um, likely feelings, right, of um, maybe being unwelcome in the presence of God with our struggles, if we come with struggles. And I don't, that's a lie from the enemy of that we have to get our act together, clean our act up before we come to God. And that's not biblical and it's not true and um, actually it inhibits healing because we're not being honest with ourselves and with God. So what's neat is that in the midst of us not feeling um, that sense of welcome with our struggles, we may feel shame, we may feel feelings of guilt or um, that something's off or wrong. Um, What's awesome is that Jesus is sympathetic. So he so yearns for us to be in communion with the Father like he enjoys that he draws us into himself so that we may access the Father through him. And what's really neat, John Piper mentions, he feels with us, not against us. So God is for us, not against us. Um, he yearns for communion with us. And that means taking on all of us, not just um, the happy parts or the joyous parts, but also meeting us in the depth of um, our sin struggles and the depth of our temptation and the depth of our um, pain and our, and our suffering. And especially in this moment, especially in a season where we're experiencing loss and isolation and a lack of face-to-face, in-person community, gosh, this is a time more than ever where Jesus can sympathize, where he can relate, where he can step in and say, hey, this isn't a surprise to me. This isn't a surprise to me what you're going through, and you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, he knows our cry. He's tasted our struggle. He bids us come with confidence when we feel our need. Um, and so I, as I was reflecting on this, I remember when I was at, um, a summer camp I worked at over, um, the summer in college 
and I was a kitschy on top of a um, counselor, camp counselor. And I remember when I was working in the kitchen, there were days that were so long and I was scrubbing um, greasy pans for so long and I was so exhausted. And I woke up the next day and I'm so thankful for the Lord's sustenance and his provision, his sovereignty, his encouragement, um, and his witness to me um, through the Holy Spirit and through other believers that I was working alongside. But man, I was so tired. And I remember in the midst of that particular summer, a friend gave me a um, a quote to passage that's rather um, lengthy, but gave me such um, joy and um, kept me rooted in God's um, nearness and his, um, his intentionality and his specific ability to reach me in the places where no one else can. So I'm going to read this um, over you, and I pray it blesses you. I pray it speaks specifically into your situation even today, and that you would go back and even write these words down. I know um, when I came back from this summer where this um, message was shared with me, I wrote it down and I taped it up to my desk um, for the school year. And I would go back to it time and time again when um, I needed it. So I'm going to read this over you. I pray you receive it, um, especially in this Monday. May it greet you as a um, fresh mercy from the Lord. And um, just remind you that you can draw near. Um, so it says, He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength as our labors increase. To added afflictions, he addeth his mercy. To multiply trials, he multiplies peace. When we have exhausted our store of endurance, when our strength has failed ere the day is half done, when we reach the end of our hoarded resources, our Father's full giving is only begun. Fear not that thy need shall exceed his provision. Our God ever yearns his resources to share. Lean hard on the arm everlasting availing. The Father, both thee and thy Lord will upbear, but thy load will upbear. His love has no limits, his grace has no measure, his power no boundary known unto man. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. Um, gosh, I, I love that. I'm even fired up right now and encouraged by that. Um, so just, I, I pray as we finish up that you would, um, be reminded today and encouraged to again, draw near, um, to the throne, um, of grace that you may receive mercy and grace in time of need. And we can go before God boldly in Christ. We can go to him through Christ and ask as a co-heir with him. And um, I'll end with this. This past week, Carol Robinson prayed specifically over Dalton and myself as we um, have recently purchased and moved into um, a new home, our first home. And um, she um, spoke blessing over each of us specifically. And one thing that she prayed that really gave me a cool mindset for how to approach my heavenly father is that I would not, be, I would not live below my privilege as a daughter of the king because Jesus died that I would be in communion with the father, would be in communion with him and have eternal life. Um, not just ahead, but currently that I would live in the full authority, um, in this, in the sympathetic, um, nature, in the, in the divine nature to, to share in that with the Lord. And so, um, but she said, yeah, that I would not live below my privilege. And so I pray that over you today, that you would not live below your privilege as a daughter or son of the Most High King, and that out of that truth, you would draw near, not as a beggar, but as a child, um, a beloved child that can stand up and come towards the Father and say, I need you. I am stuck or I am facing this temptation. I feel cornered by Satan. Um, I call upon angels to come and attend to me because 
you are not a beggar. You're his child, and he longs to answer your prayer um, and your cry for help. So I pray that you're encouraged by that this morning, y'all. Um, I'm so thankful to be with you on this um, on this Monday morning. It looks like it's going to rain today, but um, I pray even that you just sense a cleansing and a renewal, uh, being revived in the Lord's presence, and um, especially as we approach um the cross together and we journey with Jesus and um, then we get to see just what his death um, has done for us. And so, yes, this is reason 27 why Jesus came to die. Let us give thanks to the Lord. I'm going to pray for us and then we will close. And um, yeah, Lord, um, I thank you that you are personable, that you are um, a God who, who beckons us to draw near, to um, receive the free gift of salvation that you um, give us by grace and by faith, that it's nothing of our own doing, but everything that you gave Jesus. Um, Lord, you sent your one and only son um, to die on a cross that we may enter into intimate communion with you, Father. And I thank you for Jesus' sacrifice. Um, I thank you that you sent him down to dwell among us. Um, Jesus, that you consented to that, that you moved into the neighborhood, um, that you showed us what it looks like to live a life of love um, and sacrifice and obedience to the Father. Um, So Jesus, I ask now for anyone that is feeling um, an overwhelming sense of temptation, an overwhelming sense of shame, an overwhelming sense of struggle um, and pain and isolation. Right now, Jesus, I pray that you would meet them in a way that they understand, in a way that um, you've wired them to recognize you, to sense you, and that um, you would breathe fresh life into their heart. Um, That, Father, you would awaken you would awaken sons and daughters, that you would, um, Holy Spirit, move through our hearts and uh, wake us up from our slumber um, to be on fire for you, God. We want to see revival um, because you didn't die for nothing. You died for um, for real resurrection life, for everlasting life. And we want to experience that with you, Jesus. So um, numb the lesser loves that we have in our lives. Um, take those desires um, and, and numb them, Lord, that we may taste and see that you are the ultimate good, that you are sovereign, and that we would um, not only follow you, but lay down our lives for you. Um, we love you so much, God, and we love to be loved by you. We are so thankful that you love us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. <laughs> oh, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, please don't be a stranger. I know I don't get to see many of you, but I will be on here a couple of Mondays um, throughout the following weeks. And I hope to see um, many of you jump on. And then if you're at South Kansas City, do not be a stranger. Come say hello. All right, y'all. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.